welcome this morning as we come into the first uh, day of October for morning prayer on this Thursday. This is the message we have heard from Christ, that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not, say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed the flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm is Psalm 74. O Lord, our God, why cast us off so utterly? Why does your anger burn against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, whom you took to yourself of old the people that you redeem to be your own possession, and Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Rouse yourself and go to the utter ruins, to all the harm that the enemy has done in the sanctuary. Your adversaries have made uproar in the place appointed for your praise. They have set up their standards in triumph. They have destroyed on every side like those who take axes up to a thicket of trees. All the carved woodwork they have broken down and smashed it with hammers and hatchets. They have set fire to your sanctuary and defiled to the ground the dwelling place of your name. They have said in their hearts, let us make havoc of them. They have burned down all the holy places of God in the land. We have no signs, there is not one prophet left. There is none who knows how long these things shall be. How long shall the adversary taunt you, O God? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name for ever? Why do you hold back your hand? Why do you keep your right hand in your bosom? Yet God is my King from of old, who wrought deliverance upon the earth. You divided the sea by your might. You shattered the heads of the dragons in the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave him as food to the creatures of the desert waste. You cleft open spring and fountain you dried up the over ever flowing waters. The day is yours, and so also is the night. You have established the moon from and the sun. You set all the boundaries of the earth. You created winter and summer. Remember, O Lord, the taunts of the enemy, how a mindless people have blasphemed your name. Do not give to the wild beasts the soul that praises you. Do not forget forever the life of your afflicted. Look on all that you have made, for it is full of darkness and violence inhabits the earth. Let not the oppressed and reviled turn away rejected, but let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, plead your own cause. Remember how a mindless people taunt you all day long. Do not forget the clamour of your adversaries, or how the shouting of your enemies ascends continually.
Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that, as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers in his divine glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Ezra, chapter 2, verse 64, to chapter 3, verse 8. The whole assembly together was 42,360, besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 200 male and female singers. They had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. As soon as they came to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of families made freewill offerings for the house of God to erect it on its site. According to their resources, they gave to the building fund 61,000 darics of gold, 5,000 minas of silver, and 100 priestly robes. The priests, the Levites, and some of the people lived in Jerusalem and its, and its vicinity. And the singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants lived in their towns, and all Israel in their towns. When the seventh month came, and the Israelites were in the towns, the people gathered together in Jerusalem. Then Jeshua, son of Jezoadak, with his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, with his kin, set out to build the altar of the God of Israel, to offer burnt offerings on it, as prescribed in the law of Moses, the man of God. They set up the altar on its foundation, because they were in dread of the neighboring peoples, and they offered burnt offerings upon it to the Lord morning and evening and they kept the festival of booths as prescribed, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number according to the ordinance as required for each day. And after that, the regular burnt offerings, the offerings of the new moon and all the sacred festivals of the Lord, and the offerings of everyone who made a free will offering to the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, but the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. So they gave money to the masons and the carpenters, and food, drink, and oil to the Sidonians and the Tyrians, to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea, to Joppa, according to the grant that they had from King Cyrus of Persia. In the second year, after their arrival at the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, son of Jezoadak, made a beginning, together with the rest of their people, the priests and the Levites, and all who had come to Jerusalem from the captivity. They appointed the Levites, from twenty years old and upwards, to have oversight of the work on the house of the Lord. The second reading comes from Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1 to 15. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. 
These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, Find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the Day of Judgment than for that town. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The Hymn of the Word In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, and from his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The prayer for this week, following the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. O oh God, you declare your almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant us such a measure of your grace that, running in the way of your commandments, we may obtain your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayer that um, I'm going to read this morning is from Anselm, who lived from 1033 to 1109. We love thee, O our God, and we desire to love thee more and more. Grant to us that we may love thee as much as we desire and as much as we ought. O dearest friend, who has so loved and saved us, the thought of whom is so sweet and always growing sweeter, come with Christ and dwell in our hearts. Then thou wilt keep a watch over our lips, our steps, our deeds, and we shall not need to be anxious either for our souls or our bodies. Give us love, sweetest of all gifts, which knows no enemy. Give us in our hearts pure love, born of thy love to us that we may love others as thou lovest us. O most loving Father of Jesus Christ, who from whom floweth all love, let our hearts, frozen in sin, cold to thee and cold to others, be warmed by this divine fire. So help and bless us in thy Son. 
Lord, we uh, continue to pray for our world and for the nation. We pray for people in government throughout the world, for wisdom to listen to those who have expertise in the advice that they offer, particularly in the how to respond uh, to the pandemic. Lord, we pray for all who have been elected to parliaments throughout the world, but particularly in our country. We pray for members of state parliaments, for territory legislative assemblies, for chief ministers and premiers. We pray for our Commonwealth Parliament, praying for those who are elected to the House of Representatives and to the Senate. And we pray for the parties that have formed government, praying for the members of our cabinet and the Prime Minister. We pray for our Head of State, the Governor General. We pray for the members of the public service at territory, state and federal levels. And we pray for those who administer various programs. And we offer our prayers for the Treasurer at this time as he prepares to hand down the budget next week. Lord, we pray for Chief Medical Officers or Chief Public Health Officers throughout this nation. We give thanks for their wisdom, their education, their training and for their advice. We pray for all who are working at the front line, uh, whether it's in the supervision of uh, those in hotel quarantine as they return from overseas or interstate. We pray for those uh, supplying security and those who clean and sanitize uh, rooms that have been used those who work uh, in providing food and do the administrative work to keep uh, the hotels that are being used uh, operating well. And we thank you uh, for them and for their work. Lord, we continue to offer prayers for those who work in the medical profession, whether it's in doctor surgeries, clinics and hospitals particularly those on infectious disease wards and in intensive care units. We pray for the family of those who are sick, those who are still isolated from loved ones. Lord, we offer our prayers for your church throughout the world. We pray particularly for the Anglican Church. We pray for Archbishop Justin Welby, and today we pray for the Diocese of Perth and Archbishop Kay Goldsworthy, the Diocese of Chattisagrath in North India and Bishop Robert Ali, and the Diocese of Chicago and Bishop Geoffrey Lee. Pray for the clergy and people of those dioceses. We pray for the Anglican Church of Australia, for the Primate Archbishop Jeff Smith and Lynn, for the General Secretary Anne Highwood and Peter for the members of General Synod and members of Standing Committee. We pray for the Anglican Church here in South Australia, praying for the Diocese of Adelaide, our Metropolitan, Jeff Smith, for the Assistant Bishops, Tim, Chris and Denise, and for retired clergy and clergy widows and widowers. We pray for the Diocese of the Murray, Bishop Keith Dalby and Alice, we pray for the Diocese of Wallachra and myself as its Bishop and for Jan, for the Assistant Bishop and Vicar General Chris McLeod and Susan, for the Chancellor Nicholas Isles and Jenny, for the Bishop's Chaplain Anne Ford and Michael, for the Dean of the Cathedral Church of Saints Peter's and Paul, Mary Lewis and Owen, members of the Cathedral Chapter, myself, Mary Lewis, the Archdeacons, Gail Johansson, Heather Kerwin and Andrew Lang. For Canon Ali Worm and Canon John Fowler. And for Lay Canons, Michael Ford and Anne. 
and Mary Woolacott, and the Cathedral Wardens Pauline Matthews and Elizabeth Bennett. We pray for the regional archdeacons and for their care for those regions, Heather Coe in Ayr and Andrew Lang, Wakefield. We give thanks for the partnership we have with the Diocese of Mandalay, for Bishop, Bishop David Nyin Yin Yang, Mary and Solomon, for Reverend John Swan and the Diocesan and Cathedral staff. We pray especially for the Diocese of Mandalay, the province of Myanmar, in these difficult times with COVID-19. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger, and in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good, so that we may do his will. May he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for morning prayer this morning. Look forward to uh, some of you joining tomorrow as well. God bless you. Bye bye.